From the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delp and Brian Gracely, presented by a Cloud Guru, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to the Cloudcast. We are coming to you live from the massive studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And if you've been following along for the last couple of weeks, you have been paying attention to this really kind of interesting experiment and experience that we've had in working with both Techstars and the MetLife um, Digital Accelerator Program to look at kind of the behind the scenes progress, progress, you know, steps and and just the overall program of of how they went about selecting companies. Uh, we had a chance to talk to a number of the founding companies, uh, about six of the ten companies that were selected. Um, you know, kind of introduce you to them, um, understand what it's like to be part of these programs. And we've got a lot of really good feedback from people. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed that process. And today we want to kind of do the last part of of this and talk to the people behind the program um, and really the lead person behind the program. So very, very excited to have uh, Mijong Zhang, who is uh, managing director at Techstars and also really the lead person, um, our you know, kind of our biggest champion in making this happen um, with MetLife and the whole digital accelerator program. So Mijong, thank you so much for being on with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Brian, for having me. Um, so we're doing this right after Demo Day. Uh, I believe you're out in San Francisco today, kind of on to the next step with uh, with Techstars. But but for anybody who you know is is tuning into this program and has and has been interested in the last couple of weeks, give us just a little bit of your background, uh, maybe a little bit before Techstars, and then what you do uh, as part of Techstars overall. Yeah, sure. Happy to. Um, So briefly on what I was doing before Techstars, I was actually investing in early stage companies uh, right before Techstars um, and got connected to Techstars, of course, because they have awesome companies and I invested in a a few of their companies. Um, And prior to that, you know, I have a background uh, in computer science. Um, I've also worked at a Pawn Hedge Fund. I've been a corporate IP attorney also uh, was the entrepreneur of my own startup. Um, So I've done a lot of different things, uh, which actually, looking back, it all makes sense because it all helps me in my role as the managing director. Right, right. So for anybody who who doesn't know or maybe hadn't uh, heard about this previously, kind of give us a sense of how did Techstars and and MetLife kind of come together? I mean, you've got, on one hand, um, you know, super high tech, uh, fast moving in Techstars, um, in MetLife, you have this very established brand, you know, very focused on insurance. Like, how did those two things come together around the digital accelerator? Yeah, so uh, it's a really fun story on how this accelerator happened. I would say it's a story about some initiative, good timing, and a lot of luck, and the right people coming together at the right time. Um, so, from my perspective, so I actually approached TechStars about doing or starting an insure tech accelerator um, because I was based in Hartford, Connecticut, and investing in startups and saw the rise of insure tech companies. And so I got interested in, in insure tech for that reason and reached out to the leadership at Techstars to pitch them on this idea of starting an insure tech accelerator. Now, it was great timing because MetLife had already been talking to Techstars for some time about doing an accelerator um, in partnership you know, with Techstars and MetLife. And so I met with the MetLife team and we really hit it off. Um, and so you know, we all kind of uh, decide to come together and MetLife decided to partner with Techstars. And, you know, they approached me about being the managing director for the program. And uh, I was on board. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so, you know, as people heard from the last couple of show again, uh, last couple of shows, we had a chance to talk to uh, a number of your founders. Uh, Techstars is a very founder centric, uh, you know, approach to, to doing it. Um, we got a chance to get a sense of what their goals were, um, what their expectations were of the program. Um, but from your perspective, from, from Techstars perspective, and also as the lead of working with MetLife, kind of what were your goals at the beginning of the program, sort of the beginning of the three months? And then, you know, we're now at the end of it. Um, you know, how, how did those kind of evolve over that three month process? Yeah, sure. So Techstars is, you know, the, we, the worldwide network um, that helps entrepreneurs succeed. And, you know, the goal at Techstars is to help the best entrepreneurs uh, around the world um, with their companies and grow their companies. And so we had recruited globally for this program as well and traveled to places like uh, Singapore, Sydney, London, uh, and uh, talked to entrepreneurs outside of those areas as well uh, during the application process, and then selected these 10 companies uh, for the program. So our goal was to help 
these companies uh, with their businesses and grow their businesses regardless of what stage your business are at. So at Techstars, we're stage agnostic. So we have companies that are pre-product all the way to companies that have already raised millions of dollars. Um, and regardless of what stage you're at, we are helping them accelerate uh, their companies. Yeah. Um, and as, as you know, as, as we talked to some of them about the process, when we, when we recorded these shows, they were sort of in the first couple of weeks of a three-month process. Um, but for anybody who's curious about the process, just the, the Techstar process, which is very, very well refined at this point, like, can you walk us through the sort of the three months and the different stages um, as to how you structure the program, how you bring in resources and kind of what your expectations are at each stage? Absolutely. So our program is about 13 weeks or three months. Uh, and month one, we call Mentor Madness. And that's when we have our 100 plus mentors come in from around the world and meet with each of our companies uh, over you know, a, a few a few weeks. So we're literally coordinating a thousand meetings during that first month. Um, and the goal of that first month is for the for the entrepreneurs to work on their business instead of in their business. It really allows them to get feedback from incredibly smart people um, from diverse backgrounds and figure out and then take that feedback and figure out what they want to do with their business. Um, So that's month one. And then month two, the companies work closely with their mentors uh, to build traction and execute um, on the companies. And then month three, we focus on preparing the companies to meet with investors. So it's a lot around fundraising and um, and so day which, uh, as you said, we just had last week on last Thursday, which was amazing. And it's when the companies go up and they pitch their company, um, their story in their company for about five minutes. And it's a big celebration. Yeah, very, very cool. I have a question. One of the things that uh, I was a little bit surprised about when I when I got a chance to meet the teams and, and we really, um, you know, we're, we're meeting everybody was kind of the diversity of the teams. I, I think I had a preconception that this was going to be a lot of you know, brand new companies, you know, really basic ideas, new ideas, and lots of 20 something year old kids. Um, the teams were diverse. Uh, some of them were, uh, you know, more mature in age, had done a couple of companies. Um, I think one or two of the companies were, you know, already established, but were trying to either accelerate or pivot. Um, can you talk about how Techstars can help sort of any of those types of companies or any starting points? Yeah, for sure. So uh, one thing to know about Techstars is that we are stage agnostic, right? So as I um, referenced before, we work with companies that are pre-product all the way to companies that have already raised millions of dollars. And these companies join our program because regardless of what stage you're at, we can help you grow your business. I mean, Techstars, we've been um, around, you know, for over 10 years now, we've helped and even to I grid I in these stage of companies as they grow their businesses. And therefore, um, Techstars has this amazing knowledge that we can bring to the table for any of our entrepreneurs. Um, and so you're right. I mean, if you look at uh, our class, they're not just all 20-something-year-olds, as you said. Um, and I think part of that also might be because of the expertise that's needed in an industry like insurance. Uh, so we have some founders, for example, that have been in the insurance industry uh, for 20-some years and have deep industry uh, knowledge, and therefore they were able to create a very uh, proprietary technology um, to address these needs that maybe like you and I wouldn't necessarily know about. Um, and then, yeah, we have founders that have already exited their companies before. Um, we have companies that have been running their business for quite some time and business in a new uh, product line. And and um, and yeah, so it's you know we don't have set set uh, criteria on what stage you have to be at or um, what type of background you have, I, I will say that at Techstars, right, the biggest emphasis is on team. So we say we have six criteria for selection and the first three are team, team, team. Um, and great teams come in all different size, shapes and backgrounds and, you know, uh, numbers. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes makes a ton of sense. Um, you mentioned your background being fairly diverse from uh, entrepreneur to um, you know legal background uh, legal background to you know having done development and um, obviously you get a chance to hear from all of your companies. I mean, you're living with these companies. Um, they've got ideas. They're going through the process of of refining those. How does how does your diversity of background 
help in in you know trying to guide them and and it, how much do you have to you know bite your tongue sometimes and say you know I need to listen more than maybe give advice or you know steer them in a direction how how do you balance all that with your background and then your you know your need to sort of let them grow within the framework of the program yeah so I think you know, my technical background and having been an entrepreneur, um, especially the fact that I've been an entrepreneur and know what it feels like, that's probably the most uh, important part of my background that I, you know, that I uh, tap into as a managing director because um, I have so much empathy uh, for these entrepreneurs and I know what it feels like, right, uh, to be in their shoes. Um, in terms of giving feedback is uh, biting my tongue, as you said, you know, I give brutally honest feedback to these founders all the time. And they will tell you that as well. Program like team and we are on their side and any feedback we give them improve and businesses. Um, and, you know, in terms of whether they take that feedback, it is up to them. You know, sure. we are not running their businesses, right? These entrepreneurs, they are the ones running their businesses. And we make it very clear that, these companies will get feedback from everyone, right? They'll get feedback from me, from all the mentors, the investors that we bring in. But at the end of the day, they make the decision on where they want to take their business. Right, right. Absolutely. Um, we've spoken a lot about the Techstars side of this process, the Techstars involvement. Um, talk a little bit about MetLife's involvement, um, you know, everything from how you engage with the team or teams at MetLife to providing facilities to just, um, you know, kind of the, the blending of, of cultures or blending of, you know, how the communication goes on between those, those two groups. Yeah. So our program is amazing and really powerful because it is a true partnership between these two powerhouse organizations, MetLife and Techstars, right? So MetLife, they've been um, in the insurance industry for hundreds of years and have been innovating in insur in the insurance industry uh, throughout that history. And Techstars, as I mentioned, you know, we've uh, were the, one of the very first accelerator programs and have helped entrepreneurs scale their businesses. So together, it's just an amazing opportunity for entrepreneurs that are looking to build their companies in InsureTech. Um, and so MetLife, I've been so happy with the way MetLife has been involved in our program um, and been a true partner for our program. They bring a ton of resources for our companies, including mentorship. So as I mentioned, you know, we had over 100 mentors in our program. Um, over 25 of those are MetLife execs and business leaders. Um, MetLife brings the opportunity for pilots and POCs for our companies, which is incredibly valuable. And they also, um, of course, I mean, provide the space for our program. So we're on MetLife's campus in Cary, North Carolina. Um, and, you know, they also help with, you know, things like investor introductions. I mean, MetLife is an LP in the top venture capital funds like Andreessen Horowitz, um, and Kleiner Perkins. And so they're tapped into uh, the investor network themselves already. Um, and they've been helpful in making those introductions as well. Okay, fantastic. And it, were there, you know, as you, as you think about this, you, you obviously said, hey, um, you came to Techstars, you said, I'd like to do this as a program. Um, you know, were there, were there anything that, you know, in working with MetLife and, and really getting a chance to do it that things that surprised you or, you know, expectations that, uh, you know, you, you, you didn't really expect to have, but sort of, you know, went, went beyond, above and beyond in this, in this first, uh, first round of the program. You know, I came in with high expectations for my yeah. life um, <laughs> and I decided to do this program, uh, you know, join this program as a managing director because a big part of the reason is because of MetLife. Um, and I thought they would be an incredible partner. And um, I think, you know, I've just, they've exceeded my expectations. So I guess that's a surprise there. Um, in their commitment and engagement. Um, yeah. And so I know that, you know, our, our companies are really happy with that and I'm, I'm thrilled with that as well. Yeah. Um, so we, we mentioned demo days a little bit. Um, I, you know, unfortunately I, I didn't get a chance to attend. I had to be out of the country. Um, from everything I hear, it went extremely well. Um, give us a sense, um, maybe not necessarily of, of all the companies, a status update, but what happens to these companies now? We, we introduced people to them the last couple of weeks. Uh, what happens to a, a company that essentially graduates the Techstars program? Um, you know, what, what typically happens to them going forward? Yeah. So we continue supporting them. Uh, you know, Techstars is for life. And that's a really important point to make. I mean, the three-month accelerator program 
is just the beginning of the relationship and the help and support that we give to our teams. Um, so, you know, Demo Day, yes, it just um, ended on Thursday. The program last day of the program was on Friday, but I'm I have calls set up with all of our companies um, every week, you know, through the rest of the year. Um, and, you know, we're here at San Francisco, Techstars FounderCon, where they're, they're able to tap into the larger Techstars network. Um, and, and yeah, we're, we're going to continue supporting them. And, and I think that's why, you know, Techstars companies, one reason that Techstars companies um, are, are, are do so well, right, is because we, we don't just kind of say goodbye at the end of our three-month program, it's because we continue to help them um, as they scale their businesses. Let me ask you a question. So you've uh, you've now been around the the Raleigh Triangle area. I mean, you're, the, the facilities for, for the MetLife program are, are in Cary, North Carolina, but we talk about the Raleigh area, the Triangle area, Raleigh and Durham. Um, you're not originally from the area. You, uh, you know, like you said, you were living in the, the New York City area, the Connecticut area. Um, you spent time around the world. Um, just for anybody who's like, hey, you know, North Carolina, you know, I thought it was Silicon Valley. What's your what's your two cents on the area? Um, just, you know, the people, the tech scene, um, the culture scene, the weather, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's hot in the summer. Yes. Uh, but, Very much. But, uh, it's better than being super cold up in the Northeast uh, where, where I'm from. Um, so I was super excited about the program for a number of reasons. One of them was because it's in the triangle. And like you said, I'm new to the area. Uh, but I had heard great things about, you know, how Raleigh Durham is the fourth fastest growing region in America and received all these top rankings um, that I'm sure you can rattle off as well. So I came in with pretty high expectations. Um, now, what blew me away and what I wasn't expecting, and you can't really read on in articles and these rankings, um, and that and the reason I fell in, I fall in love with the area is the people and the community. Um, this the community and the triangle, I mean, they are just so open and welcoming of new uh, new people. Um, and it's no wonder there are so many new people joining. <laughs> um, and, you know, at Techstars, one of our core values is give first, which means you give without expecting anything in return. And you create this virtual cycle of giving. And I have never come across another community that is more, has embraced this and more representative of the give first values that at Texas we hold so dear to our hearts. So, um, for anyone that hasn't visit, visited the Triangle yet, I would highly encourage you to. Um, it is just an amazing community of um, of people, and there are a lot of entrepreneurs here, and it's growing. Yeah, well, no, we we appreciate the uh, we appreciate the plug for the area. We uh, we've been telling people for for seven years now that it's a great area, and okay, very cool. Um, so obviously uh, the. Kind of what I'll call this, the the first iteration of this program is is now sort of graduated. Um, you've got a little bit of a break in terms of of this program. You're off, uh, you know, kind of recharging, but also doing some things. How walk us through, um, you know, how the the next year's version of this or the second iteration of the program will work. Everything from how you uh, prepare yourself, whether it's sort of like industry preparation to I know you do a ton of travel and interviews and trying to find the next 10 companies or however many companies you're going to have, like what's that process? Or if somebody's listening to the show that says, Hey, I may want to be a candidate. How does that, how does that all work between now and, and say next spring when you maybe reannounce the next class? Yeah. So uh, applications for the next class open in January, uh, 2019. And, you know, what the process will be, I mean, pretty similar to last year. So, you know, we'll sit down with MetLife um, and figure out if there are any core areas of focus that we want to we want to look at for for next year's class and program. Um, but just like we did this year, even if we did come up with this focus areas, we'll look at everything. Right. Um, and that's reflected in the class for 2018 as well. We have companies in the. Mm four core areas that we uh, that we decided on, but we have companies outside of that as well. And so, so we'll come up with those areas. We'll talk to a bunch of companies. We're going to come up with a recruiting a schedule and, you know, figure out which cities we'll visit this time around. Um, and so there'll be a lot of travel, as, as you mentioned. Now, if, if you're interested, if there's a company that's listening to this and interested in applying to the program, um, 
figure out a way to reach out to me uh, is probably uh, the best way to get hooked on. You know, I'm on LinkedIn um, and, you know, you can go to techstars.com and look for the MetLife Digital Accelerator Powered by Techstars. You'll see me on there as well. I'm on Twitter. Um, and so, you know, I'm I, I'm going to be talking to companies nonstop uh, not starting January 2019. So um, that's what I'm looking to do. Talk to as many entrepreneurs as possible. Right, right. Excellent. Well, listen, uh, Mijung, I know you're very, very busy. I know you've got uh, events going on, but we want to thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to sort of be behind the scenes with this program, uh, get to know these companies. It's been a lot of fun for us to not only get to know them, but also get to know you, understand the process and so forth. And I hope the listeners have enjoyed uh, getting a little bit of a behind the scenes of, of how these things happen. And we're hoping that uh, one or, or many of these companies are, are going to be the next you know big thing in, in like you said, in insure tech. So um, with that, I'll wrap it up. Uh, I want to thank you again so much for your time, for all of your team's time and um, for folks, uh, if you have any questions, again, um, it, it's been a great process for us to learn about this. And uh, Mijong and her team have been really great about kind of just helping us learn and understand. And so there'll be a lot in the show notes if you want to follow up with people. But uh, as always, Mijong, thank you so much for your time. Folks, as always, thank you for listening. And we will talk to you again next week. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more podcasts, show notes, and everything social media. And visit acloud.guru for all your cloud training needs.